I get into a lot of conversations about evolution. And today I'm going to tell you about six things you ought to get right straight from the beginning. It's okay if you don't agree with these, as long as you don't mind me regarding you as an ignoramus. And really, these aren't that hard to get. Point number one. Evolution is about populations. And way too often I find people translating it into a story about individual transformation. If you start talking about cats giving birth to dogs, or crocoducks, or anything about an animal changing into another animal, you don't understand the theory. It's all about shifting frequencies within a population over time, not how you can will yourself into a superior being. Point number two. Evolution depends on chance. I've lost track of the number of times a conversation has been derailed because someone thinks everything has a purpose when the simplest explanation it was just the luck of the dice, a vagary of chance, fortune's whim. Get used to it. It's okay. Chance matters. Bambi's mom did not die to strengthen his character. Your cancer was not given to you as a punishment for parking in a handicapped space at the Walmart. Selection does not optimize by only killing the weak and allowing the strong to survive. Sometimes the weak get lucky and the strong meet a stupid accident. And wait, if you combine chance plus populations, you get predictable statistical distributions. You just have to remember that every individual for thousands of generations is rolling lots of dice. Point number three. Evolution takes full advantage of emergent properties. And then there's these reductionist zealots who reduce everything to a gene. They conjure up genes for everything. How could the gay gene have come into existence whoever, since whoever carried it would be unable to reproduce? They also tend to be simplistic behavioral absolutists. So women have genes for shopping, while men have genes for football. It's all nonsense. Every gene is connected to every other gene. We hear so much about mutations of large effect that cause massive phenotype changes, it's easy to forget that there are thousands of genes that work by subtle interactions. So we rush to assume that intelligence is the product of a discrete allele, just like cystic fibrosis. Point number four. Evolution does not stand alone. While we're bashing reductionism, uh, let's take on another one, that genes do everything. No, genes do nothing. Uh, a gene on its own is just a sequence of nucleotide. It's just a chemical. It needs much more. A gene is like a blob of paint on a palette. It has a color, but it needs a brush and a canvas to be expressed. Or it's a record. A record is silent and does nothing until the record player, or in this example, the cytoplasm, transduces its shape into sound. And that's also meaningless, except in the context of the external environment. What works varies depending on whether you're at a dance party or a funeral. Point number five. Evolution is a contingent process. Everything is the way it is because of how it got that way. The way we are is the product of millions of years of local, short-term choices that influence everything that follows after. I have seen people seriously argue that human bipedalism was an optimal choice, and that we ought to expect any aliens from outer space we encounter to be similarly bipedal. No. We are bipedal because our ancestral proto-amphibian that wriggled up onto the land had two pairs of fins, and we are and are descended from tetrapods that only had four limbs. This existing bipedalism is an awkward kludge to bring some manipulatory specializations out of a limited battery of limbs. If only Tiktaalik had inherited three pairs of stubby little lobe fins, we'd be centaurs now. The sixth point. Evolution depends on diversity. This is for you scientific racists out there. Uh, we are not stronger as a population if we are more pure. Darwin himself talked about the complex and sometimes varying conditions of life. Our strength and our future depend on variety. 
There is no master race. If you are using evolution as your prop to support your claim that a particular subgroup is superior, you don't understand evolution. Okay, you got that? Six simple little things. They're not hard. They're not counterintuitive. They're pretty straightforward to grasp, and they're what you, what you have to understand before you even begin to talk about evolution. If you want to argue about any of these points, do it in the comments. I'm happy to discuss them with you. Uh, again, keep in mind, these are pretty basic.